In this video we're going to be looking at how to draw ionic bonding. Um, they really like to ask you this in the exam, so it's really worth um, trying to get this right the first time. So just a little bit of a recap for you. Um, an ionic bond is between a metal and a non-metal. So metals are going to be over this side of the periodic table and non-metals are over this side of the periodic table and the boundary line is drawn in here. Um, it may or may not be drawn in on the periodic table you get given in the exam, um, so it's well worth learning. And a few of the key boundary points like this here is boron and then silicon, and it just ladders down like that. The other thing you need to um, remember are these numbers here. These are the groups on the periodic table. These will be on your periodic table, and these are the um, number of electrons in the outer shell. While we're doing this video, it's really, really handy if you have a copy of the periodic table in front of you um, so that you can look things up, um, otherwise you're going to have to try and remember it all and that will just be a bit horrendous. So the first one we're going to look at is sodium chloride. So sodium is in um, group 1 of the periodic table, so it has 1 electron in its outer shell. Chlorine is in group 7 of the periodic table and it has 7 electrons in its outer shell. And the key thing that you need to remember for this is that all an element an atom wants to do is to have a full outer shell. So here we have sodium with one electron in its outer shell. It's very unhappy. It wants to do anything it can to get rid of this. Sodium has seven electrons in its outer shell. Very unhappy. It will do anything it can to get one extra. So there's something really easy the two of these can do. Is that sodium just gives that electron to chlorine there. Now, sodium has a full outer shell and chlorine has a full outer shell, and they're very happy. In an exam situation, you're much more likely to get a scaffold that looks about like this and ask to um, fill in the gaps. So, this is the before situation after here, and this is the after situation down here. So, all you need to do is just fill in all of the electrons. So there's sodium's original set, a chlorine's original seven, and there's the extra one from sodium. And then they may or may not have put the charges on there for you. I'll do a whole separate video explaining charges because this is quite a complicated point. So I'm just going to take a slight detour here and um, show you this because it's an answer that link, links in even though it isn't technically drawing stuff. Um, so quite often they will ask you to describe what happens. This is just like, you know, say what you see. Say what you've just seen over the past couple of slides. Sodium loses an electron, chlorine gains an electron. Each of these are going to be worth a mark. They both have to both have fill out shells and they're held together by an electrostatic attraction. I've seen this question asked worth anything from two up to four marks. So moving on to potassium iodide is exactly the same idea here again. Potassium's in group one, so it's going to have this one electron in its outer shell. Iodine's in group seven, it's going to have seven electrons in its outer shell. They want um, to have full outer shell, so what they're going to do is that electron is just going to move over there. And this is how we need to draw it. So I've already drawn most of the scaffold here for you. You just need to pop that extra electron on there and to um, pop the charges on. So it's slightly more complicated now because magnesium is in group 2 so it's going to have 2 electrons in its outer shell and um, oxygen is in group 6 so it's going to have 6 electrons in its outer shell but it's exactly the same idea. Magnesium wants to lose those 2 electrons, oxygen wants to gain those 2 electrons. So these electrons just pop over here like this. And we draw it in exactly the same way. We just add these two extra electrons on. That's going to be a 2 plus charge. That's going to be a 2 minus charge. Um, and this is sort of scaffold you will get given, I assume, and for you to fill in. So the last one, um, this one's slightly more tricky because we have calcium, which is in group 2, so it's got 2 spare electrons. Fluorine in group 7, so it's got 7 electrons, wants to gain 1. So what happens is um, calcium gives 1 electron to each fluorine. Now everything has full out shell, and it's all very happy. And we just draw that on there by adding the extra electron on fluorine. Um, calcium is going to have a 2 plus charge and that is going to have a minus charge. 
Thanks for watching. I really hope this is helpful. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. Share to help your friends get better grades. Any comments, corrections, questions or requests down below please.